I'm going to present our work on faster and more accurate graphical model identification of tendon neck structure using trellises. Um, I collaborated with John Holleran, Professor Jeff Bumis, and Professor William Noble on this work, and we are all from University of Washington. So generally, we study the problem of mass spectral identification, where the task is to identify unknown peptide sequences based on their mass spectra, which are generated by the max spectrometer machine. And in this work in specific, we aim to improve upon the existing mass spectra identification of scoring algorithms by using the trellis structure, which utilizes the shared information among peptides to make the scoring procedure much more efficient. So the presentation will be structured as follows. Firstly, I will give a brief introduction to the mass spectra identification problem with the database search approach. Next, I will describe the trellis structure and in specific the trellises of peptides. And thirdly, I will show how to apply the trellis structure to various scoring algorithms using dynamic Bayesian network as a tool. And finally, we will look at the experiment results and see how trellises are effective in practice. So let's start with the mass spectra identification problem. Well, generally, we are given a set of unknown proteins which get digested into a set of peptide sequences and through the max spectrometer machine, we get a large collection of, obser of observed spectra. And for each observed spectrum, we have a scoring algorithm which looks into a certain peptide database and assigns scores to a set of peptides so that the top score peptide is reported as the peptide responsible to generating a certain observed spectrum. So our focus will be this last step. In specific, we will have an unknown observed spectrum with certain precursor mass and we will look into the database of peptides and retrieve a set of candidate peptides whose mass lies in certain mass tolerance window of the precursor mass. And for each peptide in the candidate peptide set, we will have a scoring function which takes in the candidate peptide and the observed spectrum match and assign a score to it, so that the top scored peptide is reported as the identifi identified peptide for certain observed spectrum. To be more specific about the scoring function, Typically, the input peptide gets transformed into some form of a theoretical spectrum, which is essentially the MZ values of the BY ions of the input peptide. The scoring function then tries to assign a score which reflects the similarity between the theoretical spectrum and the other input observed spectrum, so that the peptide generating the most similar theoretical spectrum to the observed spectrum is reported as the identified peptide. So a natural question arises from such approach is that why do we score every peptide spectrum match separately? In fact, what we are doing is that we, we are calling the scoring function multiple times on every candidate peptide and but against the same observed spectrum, which is a potential waste of computation. Moreover, as the candidate peptide consists of 20 different kinds of amino acids, there is a potential that they could share a great amount of, inf of information together, which can be utilized to save computation even further. And finally, if we score the PSMs collectively, we may detect a very poor scored PSMs early on during the scoring procedure, so that we can throw, throw them away and make the scoring even more efficient. So our proposed solution or answer to such question is to use the trellis structure, which is capable of representing the set of candidate peptides collectively and efficiently, so that if we feed such structure to the scoring algorithms, the scoring algorithm will be able to score the candidate peptides collectively and efficiently as well. So the trellis structure is generally a directed cyclic graph with the source node and the target node, and every pass from the source node to the target node corresponds to a certain data sequence. And here we show here the simple trellis stru structure consisting of four data sequences, namely Seattle, seafood, kung fu, and tofu. And you can easily see that the shared information among the data sequences are effectively identified by these shared or merged edges of the trellis structure so that the trellis representation is very efficient for the encoded data sequences. However, to construct such efficient structure is a very hard problem, and we can only do it by approximation using heuristics. So our proposed algorithm generally consists of two steps well, firstly, we add in the data sequence one by one while we make sure the prefixes of data sequences are merged. And after that, we run a DFA minimization algorithm, algorithm which makes sure the suffixes of data sequences are also merged. 
And here we give a simple illustration of the process of construction of the trellises on four data inputs, AC, AD, BC, and BD. Where firstly, we add AC and AD into the trellis where we identify the shared prefix A here. And then we add BC and BD into the trellis and similarly, we identify the shared prefix B. And finally, we run the DFA minimization algorithm which identifies the shared suffixes which gives us a very efficient and compact representation in the end. The trellises are representation for general data sequences, including peptides. Suppose for certain observed spectrum, we retrieve these three very simple peptides from the database as the candidate peptides. And to construct the trellis on these three peptides, we will first write out the MZ values of the BYN sequences of these peptides, or essentially their theoretical spectrum into these data sequences, and feed them as the input to the trellis construction algorithm that I have just described. As a result, we will have this trellis structure where we have three colored paths from the source node to the target node. And every colored path will correspond to the data sequence or, or the theoretical spectrum of a specific peptide. For example, if we follow the green path here, we will have traversed the, the theoretical spectrum of peptide EALK, which will be the same data sequence as shown here. And you can also easily, easily see that the shared information among the theoretical spectrum of the peptides are effectively identified by this shared structure so that the trellis representation of peptide is very efficient. Next, I'm going to show how to apply such efficient structure to various scoring algorithms using a tool of dynamic Bayesian networks. Well, dynamic Bayesian networks can be thought of as a more generalized form of Markov chain where we define the interactions among variables by this graphical structure which get replicated across time steps and with the time-dependent interactions similar to Markov chains. However, for our problem of, of mass spectra identification, there is no real con time concept. Instead, the time step would correspond to the orders of the, M, of the uh, observed, peak, of observed peaks based on their MZ values. Or in other words, we read in one observed peak at a time so that at time step T, we will read in the T smallest um, observed peak based on their MZ value from the observed spectrum. So we choose to use the dy dynamic Bayesian network or DBN to connect trellises to scoring algorithms for the following three reasons. Well, firstly, trellises can be very easily traversed us using a simple DBN model as we will show later. And secondly, a lot of scoring functions can also very, be very easily represented by DBNs and the DBN inference will generate exactly the same score as the original scoring functions. And specifically for this work, we will show how to write the X-core or sequest function as a DBN model, which could be potentially generalized to a lot more scoring functions. And finally, as we are using DBN inference, we benefit from the efficient DBN inference technique, specifically the beam pruning technique, which could make the scoring procedure even more efficient. The visual here is the actual simple DBN model for traversing the trellis, where the middle part, or we call chunk here, will get replicated or unrolled so that the actual length of the, mod the length of the actual model will be equivalent to the length of the input data, which in our case is the length of the observed spectrum. And essentially, such DBN model for traversing the trellis consists of three variables, namely the transition or delta variable, the trellis link variable, and the trellis node variable. And the transition or delta variable can be thought of as an input or control variable into the DBN structure. And the trellis link variable can be thought of as the output variable which contains the data you want to access from the trellis. And finally, the trellis node variable indicates our current positions in the trellis. So to understand the mechanism of such DBN model, let's revisit our previous example of this simple trellis. I suppose at the current time step, we start from the NS node which is the source node here. And if we set delta to be zero, it means we don't want to move any further into the trellis structure. So we will arrive at, we'll stay at the source node at the next time point and we'll have traversed none of the data. And similarly, suppose we still start from the source node, but if we set delta to be one, which means we want to move one step further into the trellis structure. So at the next time step, we will arrive at the nodes N0 and N1 and we'll have traversed the data C, Kong, and two. And similarly, if we start from nodes N0 and N1, and we move one step to the trellis, we will arrive at the target node for the next time step, and we will have traversed these three data. And finally, if we start from the source node, and we move two steps into the trellis, we will arrive at the target node in the next time step, 
and we have traversed all the whole data sequences encoded in the trellis structure. So that's generally the mechanism of the DBN for traversing the trellis. The next, we're going to show how to apply it to scoring functions. So first, we're going to show how to apply it to a drift model. A drift model is itself a DBN-based spectral identification algorithm that is recently proposed by my collaborators of this work and have achieved great performance on a variety of data sets. And we show here is the actual DBN model of DRIP, which is a little bit complex model. However, to apply trellis to it is very simple. But generally, we just keep the bottom part, which is the DRIP part, here unchanged, and we stack the trellis DBN part on top of it. And the DBN part can control the traverse of the trellis by inputting through this uh, delta or transition variable, and you can read data from the trellis structure by reading from this trellis link variable. And then we will get this very efficient drip trellis model, which is capable of scoring the set of candidate peptides collectively. Another great advantage of such drip trellis model is that we can discriminatively train drip model, which is previously infeasible without trellises. A discriminative training is a training method for DBNs, which often requires very efficient inference on a large set of data, which could only be made possible uh, by trellises for drip model. And as we will show later in the experiment session, the discriminative training boosted the drip performance quite significantly. And next, we are going to show how to apply trellis to X-core or sequence scoring function. We call X-core a linear scoring function as essentially it's a dot product between two vectors, which can be represented by this very simple DBN model. And to apply trellis to it is also very simple, but generally we just keep the bottom X-core DBN part unchanged and we stack the trellis DBN on top of it so that the bottom part can read data from the trellis by reading from this trellis link variable. And finally, as I mentioned, another great benefit of using DBN to connect trellises with scoring functions is that we can benefit from the beam pruning technique. The general idea is that as we are scoring the set of candidate peptides collectively, we can identify the very poor scored candidates early on during the inference based on their partial scores so that we can prune them away to save computation. And illustrated here is a simple beam pruning technique called K-beam pruning with K equals 2, where we only keep the top two scored candidates, which makes the computation much faster. Finally, let's look at the experiment results. So the major results we want to show is that the trellises indeed make the DBN scoring algorithms much more efficient. And here on the left plot is the relative runtime percentage of the trellis DBN model compared to the original DBN scoring algorithms on three data sets. And we can see for both S-core trellis model and the drip trellis model, we are able to achieve roughly tenfold speed up. Specifically for drip trellis model, we have a trellis speed model and trellis space model, where generally we vary the beam pruning technique. And as can be seen from the right, a false discovery rate plot here, for either trellis space model or trellis speed model, there is barely any loss of performance compared to the original drift model. To be more specific about this plot, the false discovery rate plot utilizes the target decoy competition approach to evaluate the effectiveness of various scoring algorithms, where at every false discovery rate threshold, we report a number of observed spectra identified as target peptides as opposed to decoy peptides. Now, generally speaking, the higher the curve, the better the performance. And next, we're going to show the the effectiveness of discriminative training of drift model, which is previously infeasible without trellises. And as can be seen from these two plots here, discriminative training boosted the performance of drift model quite significantly, all thanks to the efficiency brought by trellises. And finally, for completeness, we show our latest drift result model compared to other search engines, and we are able to achieve the best performance on two out of three datasets. So in conclusion, in this work, we propose a trellis structure to represent a set of candidate peptides efficiently. And we use dynamic Bayesian network to connect trellises to various scoring functions to get significant speed ups. And finally, we apply trellises to discriminatively train drip model to get greatly boosted performance. For future work, we plan to utilize trellis structure to, to evaluate peptides beyond the database, such as peptides with PTMs, as well, as well as to calculate the p-values for peptides, which could potentially boost the performance of scoring functions. And thanks for your attention. <laughs>
maybe this is what you were alluding to at the very end when you mentioned calculating p-values for peptides, mm -hmm. but can the beam pruning reduce the 